So that was fun. Andrea is going to be back and we're going to do some code reviews as we go along. But the next feature we need to be building is user authentication and registration. Now this is actually a lot more than you might expect. So we're going to be doing quite a bit of things as we go through here. First things first, we're going to need to generate a model for our Rails app, which is a database table. And our model is going to be called user. Users will have an email as a string column and a password digest as a string column. We don't want to store passwords in plain text. We need to make sure that our passwords are hashed and kept safe. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to run Rails DB migrate to create that database table. Now, when you run a model generator, it will generate a database migration file, which defines the new table and the changes to it, which in our case was creating a new table and adding the email and password digest fields. And that is something we can now undo and redo anytime we want. So if we decide to add a name field, we can undo and add to it, or we can add a new migration to add the name field to that table. So once these migrations have gone to production, our database is something we don't ever want to lose data in. So our migrations will allow us to say, hey, let's go create the users table, create a new migration to add the name after it's been pushed to production already. And then that way we don't lose any of our existing users. They'll just have empty names. Um, when we add that field. So migrations are really useful for that. And we'll talk more about that in the future, but it is something to keep in mind as you go. So now let's talk about the user model. As I mentioned, this is a wrapper around your database. So we can use this to query the database and see all of the users that we have, but we can also look them up and create new ones and delete them and update them as well. So there's quite a bit that this can do. But generally, there are two levels to your database models. You have the querying of the table and interacting with all of the users. And then we have an instance of a user, which is a single row in your database. And so this is kind of a template for all of your users and how to interact with them. So what we want to do here is we want to add the has secure password method from Rails. This is going to use that password digest feature or column in our database. And it's going to add a password and a password confirmation to our user. These are virtual attributes that won't get saved to the database. But when you submit a password, it will run through bcrypt and hash that password. So it can be saved in the database, but it can also be used to look the user up for authentication when they log in. So let's create our first user in the database. We will go into the Rails console or Rails C for short, and we can interact with that user. If we say user right now, it's going to give us an error saying that we don't have bcrypt installed. So in order to add bcrypt, we can go to our gem file and we can uncomment the bcrypt line here and save the file and run bundle to install it. Now, if we run Rails console and we say user, it's going to work without an error. And that allows us to grab all of the users out of the database. So this will generate the SQL commands for you and it will print out the results. So we have no records in the database, so we get an empty array as our result there. Now our user model, I want to make some notes here, it has an email string field and it has a password digest string field in our database, but has secure password also adds some virtual attributes. Um, password string is a virtual attribute and password confirmation is also going to be a string and a virtual attribute. So this is important for us to know because we will never actually need to set the password digest ourselves. We're only going to interact with password and password confirmation when we create a user and has secure password will actually convert the password. Make sure that password and password confirmation match. Then it will take the password and run it through bcrypt to create a digest and it will actually assign that password digest for us. So it's a really interesting and useful way 
of doing things. And that means we can create our user in the database, say email is chris at gorails.com. And remember we're in Ruby, so this is really just a hash that we're passing in to create. And we're going to say password is password and password confirmation is password. <clears throat> so if we run this, it will check and make sure the passwords are valid and that they match, and then it will convert them into a password digest and insert that into the database. So here you can see we're inserting a record into users table with an email, a password digest, and Rails will always generate the create of that and update of that timestamps for you. So here's where it inserts those into the query. Email is chris at gorails. Uh, dot com password digest is this digest that we see here and then created that and updated timestamps are done automatically for you there's no password and no password confirmation being set in our database so that is automatically um, handled for you and you can see it returns that new user object that we inserted and if we say user dot first it will give us that user back we can also say user dot last and it will give us that as well because we only have a single user. If we say user.all, it will give us an array of all of the users in our database, which is just the one user. So Active Record allows us to interact with our database and not really have to know a lot of SQL to make that all function. So this is a really nice and convenient way of interacting with your Ruby code and your database.